Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Shaw. In this video, I'm going to dive into some serious math. I'm going to look at full bodies versus body part splits and show you mathematically a completely neutral analysis, which is more effective in the long run. Before I get into that topic, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. The best topic ideas I turn into videos just like this. Don't forget, I have a private form. You can check out the link down below. Only members can access the forum. You can have direct uh, access to me asking me questions um, over at my website, superlivingtoday.com. So check out that link down below. All right. So the discussion, the debate between full body and splits has been beaten to death. We all know this. There's a thousand articles, probably five times as many YouTube videos. And we all know how it goes. Full body is general. Frequency training is generally more effective on paper um, than a body part split, right? That's the consensus. Well, in my opinion, and, and I stand by this opinion, over the long run, it's not really going to matter what type of workout you do as long as all the right pieces are in place. You have a good a focus on a good exercise selection, progressive overload, consistency, a good diet, a reasonable amount of volume, all that kind of stuff, right? So, but setting my opinion aside... I want to show you mathematically what happens when you analyze a body part split versus a full body workout over the course of five or six years. Now, to set the table here, we have to establish how much muscle mass a natural can build over the course of their life. This is something I'm very passionate about, something I've done a lot of research. The opinions are pretty much in the same range, in the same ballpark, probably about 30 to 35 pounds of muscle mass. I'm going to use, in this video, I'm going to use 32 pounds of muscle mass just as kind of a center point between all the varying opinions. Now, we also have to establish this number is not for underweight individuals. This number is for individuals that are starting at more of a normal body weight or even obese. What we don't want is underweight individuals that are like 5'10", 130 out of high school. They still have some weight to gain to, to normalize their, their, uh, you know, their body weight so they could gain more muscle mass. But that doesn't really count in the context of this discussion. So we're going to make some assumptions here just for sake of comparison. The biggest assumption we're going to make is that, where do I got it written down here? That a full body workout gives a 20% advantage over building muscle. I don't know what that number is. All we really know is that it increases muscle protein synthesis and people put that stake in the ground. There's many studies on this, but we're gonna say for the sake of discussion and argument that maybe a full body or frequency training gives you 20% more gains than a body part split. Now. Some of you are going to say, oh, it's more than that. No, I really generally doubt that it is more than that. In my years in this industry, I have interviewed, I have worked with, I have trained with, talked with many, many top naturals, bodybuilders, figure athletes, uh, just general transformation stories. And I'm going to tell you, most of them, at least 95% of them, made their progress with body part splits. Now, that is not me backing a body part split. That is me telling you that these people are making very good progress on a body part split. And the gulf, the gap, the distance between the gains you make on a full body workout and the gains you make on a split, sometimes it's, we act like it's a wide gulf, right? When in reality, the difference is more small. It's smaller than we believe. So I'm going to... I'm going to say that a full body workout gives you 20% more gains, all right? So with that established, if we look at some studies, uh, some research, Dr. Casey Budd is one of my favorite uh, researchers in this area. And we look at the rate of natural muscle gain, basically, basically what we know, and this is not a carved in stone rule, but it is fairly accurate, that if you can gain whatever amount of muscle mass you have to gain naturally over the course of your life, you have the potential, the potential to gain half of that, half of that remaining mass each year. So if you can gain 32 pounds of muscle mass, if you have the potential to gain 32 pounds of muscle mass, your first year you have the potential in a perfect world to gain 16. So you have 16 left after that. 
each year after that, you have the potential in a perfect world to gain half of your remaining amount of muscle mass. So 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, 1 and a half. That's a six year, that's a six year uh, look at in a perfect world what kind of muscle mass you would gain. <clears throat> now, in reality, most people struggle to get anywhere near that. So I'm going to say normal, normal for the average lifter, because we all make mistakes. It's a growing period. It's a learning period, all that kind of stuff. They gain about one third, one third of their muscle mass, the remaining muscle mass each year. So that would be like 10, 7, 5. I'm rounding, but you can, you can get the picture. So a normal lifter, you can see first year they're well under and then the second year, they still have the potential to gain about one-third of their muscle mass. So 32 minus 10 is 22. You can see that's about one-third, one-third. After about the second year, the, the normal lifter starts to gain a little bit more than the perfect lifter because, and this is a very important point to understand, this formula, this concept, this idea has multiple prongs, right? It has it has, it has multiple variables. We're not just dealing with the potential here, but we're also dealing with human physiology uh, physiology, and the, the potential here. You have the rate you have to gain compared to what you have left, what you have left, if that makes sense. So the perfect lifter is gaining one half of their muscle mass each year, their remaining muscle mass each year, but they're burning through it more quickly. And that's the key you need to understand. Because they are burning through it more quickly, they're going to pack on mass more quickly. But the, the remaining years, it's going to come on more slowly because they have less and less to gain. Where the normal lifter starts off burning it at a slower rate, but they still can sustain greater progress in later years. And obviously, it's a small advantage because they're burning through it more slowly. So we have natural muscle mass potential, and then we have rate of gains with the understanding that the more you burn, the harder it is to pack it on later in life because you've burned through a lot of your progress already. So I hope you guys understand it. I hope that makes sense. Now, again, it's going to be a long video, but I'm going to dive into the perfect lifter and the normal lifter and a full body and a split. So you see here, you have the perfect lifter in a perfect world doing everything right out of the gate. These people exist but they're very rare. <clears throat> We're going to look at their full body and their split, and then the normal lifter, their full body and their split. So let's dive into the numbers a little bit. So the perfect lifter is going to gain about half, 0 0.5, of their muscle mass, of their remaining muscle mass each year. We've established that over here, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, 1 and a half, okay? So if a full body or frequency training gives you a 20% advantage. The split lifter is only going to gain about 40% of their remaining muscle mass each year. So the full, the perfect lifter uh, using a full body workout is going to gain more rapidly, but they're going to use up their gains pool, their potential more quickly. Whereas the split lifter is going to come out of the gate more slowly, but they're going to have more muscle mass to gain over the course of each year. So the split lifter is only going to gain 40% of their potential. Uh, this is about 12.8 the first year. So you take that away from 32 and you start multiplying 0.4 versus the, the amount they have left again, which is 32 minus these numbers. And you can see that year two, the split lifter is still behind but catching up. By year three, the split lifter is a little bit ahead, year four a little bit ahead, year five a little bit ahead, year six a little bit ahead. These are just small differences. But again, what is happening here is that because you are in a perfect environment using frequency training, which is more optimal, you're gonna gain muscle mass more quickly those first two years. After those first two years, you only have like eight pounds in a perfect world, eight pounds of muscle to gain, so the rate is going to slow down. The split lifter, on the other hand, out of the gate more slowly, but has more to gain yet over the course of their life. So it's going to start to just increase and overtake what the full body lifter is doing. So long story short, over the course of six years, 
The perfect lifter on a full body workout has gained about 31.5 pounds of muscle. And the split lifter is just about one pound under at 30.51. So on paper, in theory, this perfect lifter, whether they're doing a full body or split, yes, there is a slight advantage. But over the course of five, six years, it's a pretty small advantage. All right. So we're going to look at the normal lifter, somebody that only gains about 33% of their natural potential, remaining natural potential each year. And again, we're starting with 32 pounds of natural muscle mass potential, and they're going to gain one third of what they have remaining each additional year. Now, the split lifter, it has a 20% disadvantage. So they're going to gain 0.264 of their remaining natural muscle mass potential each additional year. So this is the most disadvantaged lifter of all of ours, the normal guy on a split. So out of the gate, we have 10.56. This is our normal lifter on a full body, 7.08, 4.74, 3.17, and you can see the numbers. Again, they are taking your 32 pounds of mass and they are multiplying it by, we're multiplying it by 0.33 or basically one third. That gives you 10.56. So we subtract 10.56 from 32 and that number we again multiply by 33. So we continue that process. With the split lifter, we're going to multiply 32 pounds by 0.264. So we get these numbers. Okay, so you can see our normal lifter on a full body and split, full body is 10.56. And the split is 8.45. A split, you know, is a couple pounds under that first year. Second year, an advantage for a full body lifter. Third year, advantage for a full body lifter. But year four, five, and six, a slow advantage, just a slight minor advantage for the split lifter because they have more to gain and they're getting a little bit more out of their training. Whereas a full body lifter, again, has burned through their burned through their gains a little bit more rapidly. So after the course of six years, a normal lifter is at about 29.11 pounds of muscle mass gained, and a split lifter is at 26.92 pounds of muscle mass. So of all these scenarios, these are very similar. The normal lifter on a split might be slightly under, but again, there's something we need to consider here, okay? We put these in the two categories, perfect and normal, perfect and normal. Rarely, if we're training for six years, are we in one or in the other. Things can fluctuate, things can deviate, life can kick our ass. So this is not an either or situation, okay? Uh, you might have somebody who is darn near perfect their first year and then life kicks them in the balls and they're a little bit more normal, etc. So we have to establish that, that on paper, in theory, the difference between uh, you know theory and reality is is uh, you know is very real. So these are just baselines, perfect case and normal case. So if you look at things really over the course of five or six years, it doesn't really matter too much. And honestly, you know when we look at things, one um, you know rarely do you have anybody doing a full body workout over the course of six complete years. Rarely do you have well. We, we, I was going to say rarely do you have somebody doing a split over the six, course of six years, but that has actually been the norm for quite quite a while. There are some obviously disadvantages with a full body workout. As you get stronger, all the warm-up sets become tedious or they can become tedious. That's one of the things I don't like. Um, I like, uh, you know, you can spend more time in the gym, which can, you know, impact your motivation, etc. So there's positives and negatives to each type of, of uh, you know, to each type of training style. But really the key point here is when we look at the math over the course of five or six years, yes, there is a slight difference here, but you can't compare 26.2 from a normal lifter to 31 from a perfect lifter. If you are a perfect lifter and train for five or six years, it's really not going to really, it's not going to matter much whether you do a split or full body workout. Things are going to shake out in the end. Comparing a normal lifter you're at about a two pound difference over the course of six years. Just a small difference, right? It's not a huge difference. So I'm not minimizing that difference. But what I really want to show you is if you are training properly, you are using a good exercise selection, progressive overload, a reasonable amount of volume, 
you're consistent and you have a good diet. The difference is actually pretty small, pretty small over the course of five or six years. And I will end you with, I'll end with one final thought. Most people, most people that lift don't even reach normal standards, okay? They don't reach this. Most people gain rate much more slowly. All we need to do is walk into a gym to establish that reality. So we could set up another table with perfect normal and then normal gym training, right? Um, so that would probably make the difference between these even more trivial. So that's it. I want to take a neutral look at the math just to help you guys understand the argument a little bit better. Again, this is assuming there's a 20% advantage for a full body over or frequency training over a split. The difference could be smaller than that, and I believe the difference is smaller than that. So frame all of this with that in mind. So guys, hope this video has been of some help. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. If you made it this far in this video and have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do. I'd appreciate the support. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.